Welcome to They That Hope with Father Dave and Deacon Bob. Seeing humor and hope in a crazy world of football. Are you ready for some football? Sorry about that, folks. Especially if you've got like earphones in noise yes. counseling. Small children that were trying. You, you finally put the kid to sleep and you thought, I can get 30 minutes of peace and quiet and listen to my friends Bob and Dave, who would never do anything to disrupt my family life. I would not. Well, I just did. There you go. But it's football season. It's That's so right. exciting. Here we go. Ready or not. Yeah. And you're wearing your favorite jersey. Wearing my favorite jersey. It's Simeon Rice. Love Simeon. Love Simeon. I mean, Rice. How can it be? Anyway. <laughs> Was that from Jesus Christ Superstar? That's song of Simeon. Michael oh. Card. Oh, there you go. Um, the jersey number is 97. That's nice. I was married in 97. I uh, graduated Franciscan Perfect. with my master's degree in 97. Everything's coming together. And today is the 97th Stop it. episode. Stop. Stop. It's like a magic trick. Stop. 97th episode of Day That Hope. We'd like to thank all of you uh, who have made it happen. If you stopped listening to us, They're would we have, would we have kept doing it? Probably. If like we got nobody listening. Oh. We'd just do what we do, except it'd be over a beer. That's right. We'd well, still not, have these not conversations. That never, not that that's never happened. So <laughs> Yes, but um, we're that's really cool. grateful for 97 episodes. Do we know what we're doing on our 100th? We had a lot of ideas, and okay. I'm guaranteeing you we're not going to do any of them. They all require preparation and work, <laughs> which has not been yeah. not been our charism yeah. here at yeah. They That Hope. Yeah. But um, because we're always looking forward. That's what hope does. That's right. That's right. We're not looking back. No, we're not. We're just going forward. Yep. Because. So maybe for the hundredth episode, you and I will do a duet of some sort. Ebony and. Hey, how did your team do yesterday? I think it would just be Ivory and Ivory. Okay. Okay. You're right. (laughs) We could do to all the girls I loved before. Okay. Be a short song. (laughs) Yeah. yeah, You're not wrong. Um, The the Franciscan. I'm looking down at the ESPN feed because I wanted to have other sports scores up. So NFL kicked off this weekend. Uh, It began with the Rams playing the somebody. The Bills. Yeah, Bills and Bills. Bills are. Bills. They're the real deal. They're my pick for the Super Bowl. Is that right? Yep. I got Josh Allen on one of my fantasy teams. He's good. Yeah, that was really good. Oh, you know what it was? So I am i don't usually do fantasy foot. Well, I guess I do it with the family. This year I'm on two fantasy teams, which makes it seem like I'm into it. Yeah. But I got on it because of the Franciscan right. one. Bob which and I are on a uh, team together. Or a, a league, league together. together. Right, a league right. together. And uh, there seems to be, I think there's 43 teams on this league. It's a very I don't understand deep it. league. Well, here's what I don't understand. So... No offense to Dan Kempton, whom we love. I think he organized this. Did Dan Kempton organize yes, this? Yes, yeah. Um, Yahoo Fantasy Sports? Yeah, that's what, actually, that's one I always use. Is it really? Yeah, that's what my family's Why? always use. Why? Is, is the American Online one too full? I mean, who uses Yahoo anymore? Is that even a thing? The Yahoo Fantasy is one of the largest fantasy leagues in the in the is whole it? world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, this is why I don't know fantasy stuff. There you go. I'm a bit well, confused. Neither do I. My nephews always tell me. Uh, by the way, Uncle Dave, your quarterback's out this week. It's like, oh, maybe, <laughs> I should, maybe I should work on that. <laughs> well, I had Josh Allen and did really well. But more importantly, in non fantasy football, this would be real football, right? Or maybe science fiction okay. football, since that's usually the opposite of the fantasy genre. Um, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers slowly choked. The Dallas Cowboys. Oh, Father Jonathan. I'm yeah, so sorry. he's so. We're sorry, Father Jonathan. The uh, Dallas Cowboys scored a field goal on their first drive, and that was it. That was all she wrote. That was all she wrote. And actually, um, it wasn't an exciting game per se. Uh, they, you know, Dallas scored a field goal, and then the next four field goals were Tampa's. And I like the commentary mm. of Chris Collinsworth. At one point during the third quarter, he was mentioning that. He could tell that Dallas was lining up not man to man, but doing more of a zone. They just didn't want to get killed by the pass. Yeah, you could, yeah, you sure. could tell they walked in saying, "We're not going to let Brady beat us with his arm." And so Brady was just super patient. And it was interesting. At one point in the third quarter, Collinsworth, right before the snap went, Cowboys just went man to man, and Brady we knows go. it. Here and then, go. boom, Mike Evans in the end zone. It yeah, was like, yeah. "Yep, that's that's over." <laughs> you know they. They thought maybe we'll mix it up a little bit, and that's all he was waiting for. Don't mix it Dak up. Dak Evans, um, no, not Dak Evans. Dak Prescott uh, got hurt with mm. his uh, something wrong with his hand. Of course it is. I was I was with somebody this weekend, and they said, "I wonder how uh, the Cowboys are going to fall apart this year." <laughs> yeah, well, that's how <laughs> they fell go. apart last year. Go. So, uh, love to all the Cowboys fans. Both of them. Um, yeah, that's right. And Chris Oliveira. There's three of them now. All but. Three. Uh, Buccaneers looking sharp in the beginning of the season. Looks like that vacation didn't hurt Brady at all. Todd Bowles, there's a new coach for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, gets his first <laughs> win, and it was a glorious day. It wasn't a glorious day on Saturday. 
Oh, no. Did Notre Dame lose again? Yes, they did. To, to Marshall. Marshall? Yeah, exa- exactly. They are Marshall. Yeah, there's a problem. There's a problem. So we, is, it, we, is it the coach? I don't think so. I don't know. I mean, I yeah, I think it may be the offensive coordinator. Well, I mean, that you, A, you shouldn't lose to Marshall. So something's going yes. on. That's, if you're Notre Dame, no, yeah, yeah, no yeah, disrespect yeah, no, to any no. other school. Actually, they, were, they played really well, but you shouldn't lose. Notre Dame should not lose to Marshall. So we'll just move on because... We it do hurt, because, it, because it hurts. Yep. But tonight is. What about baseball? What, what about tonight's game? Tonight, there are two teams that are playing each other. Yeah. In my the Broncos. NFL. Okay. And oh, the Seahawks, the which new, is actually great because yeah. Russell Wilson left from the Seahawks. Yeah, yeah. So, what's, the, your, the, what's the, your call? What's oh, going to happen? Denver's going to win by 17. Okay. Well, yeah. those of you listening right now can look back and see if that yeah, actually yeah, occurred. Yeah, you can see. But the thing is, is um, first off, it's interesting, obviously, because he left uh, Seattle. He left but Seattle. I, I, and he went to another. West AFC, Coast team. Right, that, right, right. That's an interesting yeah. move. I like him. I mean, I like Russell Wilson. Yeah. I was just oh, I was just in Denver, so oh. that was that was a lot of fun being in Denver and seeing all the kind of excitement for the game. So it was great. So with that being said, um, are we? Oh wait, the other big thing was the U.S. Open, and it was funny because being out in Denver, um, I'd get back in the evenings and I would watch some tennis, like around yeah. ten, ten thirty at night. So I watched more tennis this year than I did. But this kid that won the U.S. Open. 19 years old. What's his name? Spain. Do you remember? Carlos Alcaraz, Alcaraz or something like that. Okay. I mean, Carlos one, Acutis? You know, it, it might have been. He came back N- from the dead. Did, number Th- one player. Now he's going to get to be a yeah, saint. That's right. Number one player in the world, 19 years old, just a beast. Wow. Just a beast, yeah. So that was fun. Nice. Yeah. Is so the uh, women's one finished as yeah, well? Yeah, but I don't remember the, the woman who won. Yeah, our I don't our apologies to uh, women's sports. Yeah, we should right. also mention in women's sports the WNBA is in their finals. Yeah, right. Sh- is Chicago one of them? I know Seattle is. Okay. Yeah. We don't know. Yeah, I don't have enough bandwidth to follow that many sports. Uh, you know, I think if Cleveland had a team, I might follow it. And now I'm actually really worried as I'm saying it out loud that Cle- someone might email me and say <laughs> Cleveland, Cleveland has a team. Cleveland has okay, a team. Can I, I'm pretty can sure I, they don't, though. So the other thing that was fun, so it was just great being out in Colorado I did some things with uh, Chris Stefanik and did some a thing for the Dicey's. Hmm. But it was funny just, again, meeting people who says, oh, we love your podcast. But this was kind of like, I think we finally made it. Oh. So I, the, one of the main reasons I was going out was to give a talk, uh, the keynote for the Catholic Medical Association, which was really fun. A bunch hmm. of doctors. So it was great being with some of our alumni who were doctors or, yeah. or PAs and that kind of thing. It was just, the whole event was wonderful. And, and, other, and the other thing is just, the medical world and the Catholics really need to come together on this because there's so much, so much mess that's going on in the medical world. But so he goes through the introduction, you know, Father David. You mean Blanca. blood and guts and stuff? No, I mean crazy choices and decisions oh, and, and oh, physici- metaphorical yeah, mess. Yeah, and yeah, physicians yeah. being forced to do things or, or te- you know threatened to be forced to do things. But so the introduction, the physician who who's actually the father of one of our alumni does this introduction and you know Father David's done this, that, and the other. And he is one of the hosts of the extremely popular <laughs> podcast, They That Hope. Nice. And as soon as I got laughing, done laughing, I got back up and started giving the talk. So it was fun. Nice. That's fantastic. Yeah. Looks like we've made That's it. That's right. That's right. No, it was great. It was a great weekend. I you, was or in, you were traveling this weekend? Too? I was in Fall River, Massachusetts. Uh, Fall River, if you're not familiar with that diocese, it's the southern end of Massachusetts that also covers Cape Cod. So yep. I was not near Cape Cod. I was actually near Fall Rivers. Uh, Fall, Fall River, Providence, Rhode Island okay. was a, was maybe the, the largest city nearby, and um, they, um, you know, with an alum, Oscar Rivera, who speaks at our youth conferences and is just an amazing young man uh, who now is a director of youth ministry for that diocese. They had their first pastoral leaders summit, and it was a really big deal for them because uh, you know they haven't really done much since COVID. The diocesan office changed, and they. They did a great job. They knocked it out of the park. The bishop was there. He was absolutely wonderful. You know, what was funny about returning to the Northeast, that's also the diocese where Attleboro, Massachusetts is, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and the Shrine of La Salette, where in the 90s and the beginning of the Zeros, we did all of our Steubenville East conferences, and I had many years of hosting those conferences. A lot of the folks that were there still working in the church were coming up saying, Hey, remember Attleboro? Remember, I mean, if I would have brought my guitar and played "Behold the Lamb" out of the jungle go. and going home, would have torn There'd the house down. It would, it would have gone a little bit nuts. That's funny. So it's just a joy to see people who 
stick with it. You know, yeah. I mean, 20 years, 30 years, or now they're volunteers or they're leading other things, but they're still doing ministry. And I think that's a beautiful thing about ministry in the Northeast. You know, they talk about things never change in the Northeast. It's one of the hardest places to do ministry. But on the positive things, things never change. Like the folks that are working in ministry, they don't give up. You know, mm-hmm. they're tenacious. They're still doing it. And it's really a beautiful thing. So it was a real, just a shout out to all of you working with the Frozen Chosen out there in the Northeast. And uh, cool. it was really fun to see everybody this That's weekend. Cool. Yeah, awesome. And now, yes, we have one. <laughs> Next month, Franciscan University will host a very important conference on campus, October 7th through 8th. Fight for that one parking space, everybody. It's called Restoring a Nation, the Common Good in the American Tradition, and it brings together leading scholars, elected officials, journalists, and students who recognize that America's liberal agenda has failed our nation and its people. Speakers include the noted political analyst and conference organizer, Sorab Amari, Franciscan University theology professor, Dr. Scott Hahn. Who's that guy? Adrian Vermoulet of Harvard Law School, sorry, Adrian, if I mispronounced your name, R.R. Reno, editor of First Things, Chad Pecknold of Catholic University of America, and many more. For the conference schedule and to register for the Restoring a Nation conference, go to franciscan.edu slash restoring-a-nation. Again, that's franciscan.edu slash restoring-a-nation. God bless Franciscan University. God bless America. God bless our queen. Oh, yeah. Should we talk about that? Yeah. Do you want to say anything about this conference? Are you going to get to be there or are you on the road? I'm on the road. Uh I think I'm there for just a little bit part of it. But, I mean, it's fantastic. It's dealing with so many of the major issues that are going on in the world right now. It's interesting. uh, We had talked about just briefly about this, that they're, they're having this conference in the middle of this cancel culture that we have. And uh, it was funny, I just saw recently, Dave Van Vickel was supposed to give a talk, but I think he got sick or something like that. Okay. So there was this picture, and it just said, canceled over it. So <laughs> that was funny. But um, yeah, I, was, I gave the talk to the parents and, um, and, the, and the teens, uh, the students at the beginning of the school year. And that was one of the things I was talking about, this idea of being canceled. But I found myself reflecting on being canceled. Now, I don't have Netflix or anything like that, but yeah. I was thinking, how do you get canceled in the in what what really came to me was that you can only be canceled if you've subscribed to something. Mm. And I just talked a little bit about that, that, that I don't subscribe to the most of... Somebody had asked me, or was I afraid of being canceled? You know, most of what's going on right now, I just don't subscribe to it. I yeah. don't subscribe to the whole, um, you know, the, 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 the movements that are the activists about the transgendered issues and the, um, the whole life issues, those kinds right. of things. So if you don't subscribe to that, if it's not something that, that you believe that you hold to, then... Let's not be that worried about being canceled. Yeah. You know, so, yeah. So that's, th- this particular conference is going to be dealing with some of those issues. Right. So yeah. Should we go? Are you? No, and not full, full disclosure, he just uses my passwords for my streaming services. That's true for, although, you know, <laughs> we got rid of, we got rid of cable. So I think we got some of those. <laughs> yeah. Of the because streaming one services? Of them, one of them. It, what you time? even made your own profile picture on the Disney Plus one day. I did. But one of them, <laughs> it came up sometime, one time that said, um. Your credit card's about to expire. I said, should I let Bob know? I said, I'll just let him take care <laughs> of that. Just keep buying stuff. It's yeah, fine. Yeah. It's fine. Oh, I've never bought anything. I don't I know you haven't. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I've got seven kids. Okay, Who knows so what they're doing. The, the queen. Yeah, the queen. That was sad. She, she In a away. happy way. I mean, she... She was, what, 90? Something. She's been alive. No, she's been reigning for a third, you know, 30%, which is almost a third yeah. of our country's history. Oh, my goodness. Isn't that kind of crazy to that's think about? That's absolutely that, nuts. I mean, just think of what, what she saw. Well, and I think that's it. You know, it's because um, you, you can have a lot of varied opinions about her and about royalty in general. But you just, when you think of a witness to history. Oh, my goodness. I mean, her first prime minister was Win- Winston Churchill. Yeah, uh, and, unbelievable. Um, you know, her story's interesting. I don't know if you know this. Some might, if you watch the uh, Netflix show The Crown, you which should, I don't. Uh, yeah, you should. It's a really, actually, really I've interesting. Heard it is, yeah. So she, um, you know, she, uh, her dad was the younger brother um, in the family, and he wasn't going to become the king because you're the younger brother. And then the older brother abdicated the throne. 
So, because it married a divorced woman. Yeah, right? married a Which divorced woman. And there's also some shady things like they found later he had some connections to Hitler and Germany and oh. some things that, you know, probably was good that he abdicated probably. the throne at, at that point. So he, um, his brother becomes king. And now... It's his, great to be king. It's great to be king. And he only, his brother only has two daughters. He has no sons. So suddenly... Um, it's a powerful scene, I think, in the Netflix show uh, where here is Elizabeth. She's a 13-year-old girl. She's playing with her sister. Life is totally normal. You know, she, there's no expectation of her to do anything whatsoever. And then suddenly well, somebody... A stretch, but... Yeah, I, but you know I, what I mean. I what you but you know mean. what I mean. Like, well, it wasn't no, I know, like... I know. Yeah. Sure, sure. And then somebody comes in and they're like, uh, we need to change all of your education. You know, <laughs> you're going to be... You're going to be the queen. You're going to be the queen. You know, like, and like just this life change of like... I'm, I'm what? And, and how I think the show really, I mean, again, it's a fictional show, but I'm confident at least that spirit of it, of yeah, like, yeah. your life is not your own anymore. No, it's funny. I was talking with my mom last night and she was referencing that. My mom sh- certainly is not watching the, the crown. So yeah. I think that's some accuracy in that. Yeah. It's just such an interesting, now you've been to London a lot. I've well, I got my PhD, times, I got yeah. my PhD in England. So maybe for about five or six years, I was going over to England twice a year, yeah. you know, very regularly love England, love London. And you can't, and, and she's Did just, you ever a, see the queen. I did actually with my daughter, Maria. Oh wait, that's right. You posted. On yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah. Yeah. It was really cool. We got to line up and there she was in her little horse and carriage moving by and it was just cool. My daughter was really excited, obviously, but nice. I was I was as well. Just again, um, a witness to history, um, a person. You know, you can have a lot of different opinions about the royals, and in the United States, we certainly it just, you know it's, rejected it, it, royalty as just part so, of our yeah, foundation. Yeah, really, it's just so strange. It, I mean, I watched uh, King Charles now his address, and it's just I, it's just so King different. Charles is like seventy five years old. You talk yeah. about a guy waiting. Yeah, yeah, right, right. I mean, like, as a little boy, he's told, you're going to be the next king Yay. in 75 years. <laughs> that's right, what? That's right. I mean, he's like almost like, now I get it? I'm yeah, 75. That's right. that's right. What insane country would elect somebody yeah, at 75, 75 years old? No, yeah, kidding. anyway, there's a <laughs> little commentary there that we won't get into. No, it was, it was inter- yeah, I, I've been to London uh, a couple of times, but never got to see the Queen, which is kind of surprising. Yeah. But I'll actually... I'm going to Europe, so I'm thought I leave on Saturday. Well, I'm going over for the Passion Play, uh, the Oberon oh, the Omaragabagabaga, yeah, Omaragabaga uh, Passion Play, and yeah. then we're going to go over to uh, Budapest and to Prague uh, and to Bratislava. So, but I may just stop by the funeral while I'm over there. Yeah, why not? Why not? Uh, it's, it's probably not going to be a lot of people. Probably you open. probably should. Yeah, just to, to make them feel the better. University? Yeah, represent Franciscan yeah, okay, Catholicism. You're right. You're she right. she was the head of the Church of England. She you know? was. This she would be was. a very ecumenical bridge building. Yeah, moment. you're right. I'm going to look into that. Yeah. I'm looking into that. Yeah, check that But we out. do need to figure out how we're going to do podcasts while I'm away. So we don't need to do that this minute, but say, it, is, it um, is something we should probably over the internet. talk about. <laughs> so. All right. Was there something else we're supposed to talk about? I mean, not that we have a plan <laughs> Let me much. check. Are you feeling okay? No, no, I'm not, actually. You, you, might, you might notice that normally Father Dave's dulcet voice is a little bit dimmed okay, this so morning. Okay, so queen, death, travel, cancel, subscribe. Intro, podcast. Oh, how do you like that travel? thing? You got like a little remarkable thing. I do. Yeah, I like it a lot, actually. Does it work? I, don't I know. mean, what do you mean, does it work? Well, I don't know. I mean, it like is it as effective as one would hope it would be? I've seen yeah. it on like no, Instagram. No, I've, I've liked it very, very much. But one of the things that like- I guess really, this is our next plug. Really <laughs> high tech people may not like it because you can't go online with online with it. You, okay. So it's it's- Kind but of that's simple. nice because it's not going to distract no, you. No, that's exactly their, kind yeah. of one of their selling points. It's really simple. I take notes all the time. And I've got notebooks everywhere. And somebody, one of the guys that's on my council said, why don't you get one of these things? And it's been really great. So, yes, they work fine. It saves your handwriting? Does it, it translate does. it, it, it into translate English? It translates it to text, but trust me, my, <laughs> like, like when I, you can push this button in tense, into text, and it's like, you got to be kidding me. It's just what yeah, I said. That's not, a, that's not so at all what I said. The hieroglyphics or whatever it oh, is. Oh, there you go. That all is right. right. All right. Uh, we are now looking into our continual journey into the letter of the Philippians. And we are picking up where we last left off. Or Ephesians. Or or Galatians. Um, We are going to do chapter 2, verses 12, through chapter 3, verse 1. It's a little odd break, but it's the way it is. So then, my beloved, obedient as you have always been, not only when I am present, but but all the more now when I am absent, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. For God is the one who, for his good purpose, works in you both desire and to work. 
both to desire and to work. Do everything without grumbling or questioning that you may be blameless and innocent, children of God without blemish in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation, among whom you shine like lights in the world, as you hold on to the word of life, so that my boast for the day of Christ may be that I did not run in vain or labor in vain. But even if I am poured out as a libation upon the sacrificial service of your faith, I rejoice and share my joy with all of you. In the same way, you should rejoice and share your joy with me. I hope in the Lord Jesus to send Timothy to you soon, that I too may be heartened by my hearing news of you. For I have no one comparable to him for genuine interest in whatever concerns you, for they all seek their own interests, not those of Jesus Christ. But you know his worth, how as a child with a father he served along with me in the cause of the gospel. He it is then whom I hope to send as soon as I see how things go with me. But I am confident that the Lord I am confident in the Lord that I myself will also come soon. With regard to Aphrodite, Aphroditus, Fred, my brother and co-worker and fellow soldier, your messenger and minister in my need, I consider it necessary to send him to you. For he has been longing for all of you and was distressed because you heard that he was ill. He was indeed ill, close to death. But God had mercy on him, not just on him, but also on me, that I might not have sorrow upon sorrow. I sent him, therefore, with, the great, with greater eagerness, so that on seeing him you may rejoice again and I may have less anxiety. Welcome him then in the Lord with all joy and hold such people in esteem, because for the sake of the work of Christ he came close to death, risking his life to make up for those services to me that you could not perform. Finally, my brothers, rejoice in the Lord. Writing the same things to you is no burden for me, but it is a safeguard for you. The word of the Lord. Gloria a Dios. That's great. Uh, maybe just start with the end there, because um, that ending part is just a cool letter. You know, it's a nice, it's just a nice insight mm-hmm. into the Christian community. Um, you know, you get to hear about how much Paul loves Timothy. You know, apparently, um, Ephrodotius. Yep. Uh, that the Philippians sent Ephrodotius to Paul because they were worried about how Paul was doing. Paul is in prison. And when you're in prison, you know, they don't necessarily have, like, a whole system that takes care of you. If you're in prison, you need other people to really be taking care of you. So clearly the community at Philippi felt so concerned that Paul was in prison. They sent somebody, and then he himself got really sick, and they were quite anxious about what's going on with him. We get so used to living in a communications age, you know, where you would just, like, text somebody something. Yeah, and yeah. um yeah, so they're just waiting around to hear the news, and that's part of this letter is, hey, he's okay, I'm going to send him back, Timothy's going to come, I hope to come as well. And anyway, I just think it's really, it really just shows a beautiful, it's a community taking care of it, each other, yeah, yeah. you know, it, and um, I think that's kind of a nice thing to do. But I think the real, um, I mean, there's just some great content in that beginning that I read, verses 12 through 18. My beloved is beating as you are, um, Work out your salvation in fear and trembling. That's an interesting phrase, and I try to look a little bit more into that because mm-hmm. at just first blush, you hear the phrase fear and trembling, and you think like abject terror, you know, like, oh, Lord, don't kill me, don't kill me, right? Um, it's the third time actually in the scriptures that Paul uses that phrase. Fear and trembling. Fear and trembling. So it seems like it's a little bit of like a... It goes back to it. it, it yeah, yeah, it, yeah, it yeah. it's like a you know a common phrase. Mantra. He used it in, uh, he used it in the letter to the Ephesians where he talks about slaves should be in fear and trembling, not just of their master but also of the Lord. Uh, he talked about it in his first letter to Corinthians when he's writing about Titus, and he said, "I think it's great that when Titus showed up, uh, you gave him the obedience and responded to his teachings in fear and trembling." And the, the idea of obedience is always connected to the fear and trembling. It's more like um, it, it's a reverence. It's an awe. Uh, it's not terror. I think that's probably right. the biggest thing to communicate. Right. Sometimes people hear, work out your salvation in fear and trembling, and they go, oh, I should really, like, freak out before the Lord. But, you know, I, uh, when I went to the NBA All-Star Game and I took my daughter Eliana to it, and we got to meet one of the Cavs players, Evan Mobley. She was in fear and trembling. Fear and trembling. I mean, it was yeah, just yeah. cute. You know, she was like, oh, I can't believe that I'm meeting yeah. an all, you know, a, a, an NBA player and a Cavs player. And I thought to myself as she was like 
it her reaction was like fear and trembling. I thought, oh, that's the kind of way that yeah. we should be coming to the Lord. Yeah, the thing that I like about it is, you know, and this is obviously the question, have we been saved? Mm. I mean, Paul is saying, work it out. You yeah. know, that, the, yes, the, the merits of Christ, that's what, what saves us, but we need to work with that. We need to cooperate that. The, the word, and it's, no single word kind of captures fear and trembling, but right. it, in some ways it's a respect or an honor, a reverence, you know, um, a uh, diligence maybe. Yeah. Yeah, so all, all this those This Bible verses. actually in the footnote says awe and seriousness. Okay, I like that, that seriousness. Yeah, yeah, yeah I like that the seriousness. seriousness to it. Right, right, right. That's actually a really good word. That that we're gonna we're gonna work at this. We're gonna take it serious. We're not gonna ignore it. We're gonna continually do it, continually do that. That that you know, yes, I believe by the merits of grace of Jesus and by this Holy Spirit that I can be saved. But I need to work at it. Yeah. I need to Amen. continue to work to be faithful. I need to continue to seek the Lord. I can need, need to continue to pray. I need to continue to look at my my weaknesses and. and you know, the ways that I'm not patient when I should be or disciplined yeah. when I should be, those kinds of things, and not just say, okay, well, that is what it is. But we continue to work at that, and we take it seriously. So, yeah, that's great. Throughout Paul's letters, and we'll get to this even more in chapter 3 because he's going to come back to the theme, when Paul talks about salvation, he talks about it in three ways. I I am saved, I am being saved, and, and I will be saved. Yeah. And, and that's very Catholic. Yeah, I think so, too. Yeah, yeah. yeah that, that understanding. Even because sometimes we're Protestant brothers and sisters have that once saved, always saved. Mm-hmm. But I would also say that for when we as Catholics hear that, we can think sometimes, oh, so they think they're saved and nothing else matters. Yeah. But <laughs> we know a lot of Protestants who they're working hard at their faith. Yeah, and sure, that's sure. And I think that's exactly what Paul's trying to say. You know, sometimes I think we can almost get too buddy-buddy with God and we can not take it seriously and so yeah. that's what paul is suggesting the telling the philippians to do like look take this seriously what is and your it, bible what's the heading that your bible has on that on right before verse 12 that's a good question obedience and service, service in, in the, the world. world okay that's what mine is too yeah we're using the same bible yeah. I think. the the new american bible revised edition the text, Nabra. the the word that just really struck me as i was looking through and praying through was the word obedience and it's funny because i think in some ways the word obedience has a, neg- a really negative connotation. Mm-hmm. You know, be obedient, be obedient. But Paul continually comes to that theme as well. Yes. Is that is that it, it demands? I mean, if we take a look at the the fall and, and at the nature of the fall, is that Adam and Eve weren't obedient. Yeah. And the the ma- not the majority. Our sin is ultimately a question of obedience. Yes. So Paul continually comes back to that, and and there again, there's a way that we, we kind of resist obedience. It's almost like an oppressive word, mm. but I think in fact, it's quite the opposite to be, be obedient to the gospel is ultimately liberating right? yeah. because what sin does is it, is it ties me down. It, it, it constricts me. It doesn't allow me to be free. So it, it's interesting the way the evil one kind of thwarts those things and kind of confuses those. I want to be obedient, but and maybe just on that, that I remember when I was in seminary, there was a particular professor. He was he was just an interesting guy. He rode a mi- motorcycle. He was a priest. Hmm. Rode a motorcycle. Had a, you know, b- a long hair and ponytail. Motor- yeah, ponytail. Right. That's uh, something that I don't do a lot with. But um, he was just an interesting person. But like he loved the Lord and he loved the church. Hmm. And he said, you know, there been, there are going to be times in your guys' life when you're going to come kind of face to face with. A teaching or a way the teaching is presented or or a bishop, lots of diocesan and clergy there, could be a provincial or a pope. Uh, and he said, there has to be some time in your life that you're going to have to bow your head in submission. Hmm. And and I've, I've just really prayed about that a lot over the years, that just those two images, one, you know, you're going to stand up against them and you're going to fight or you're going to take a breath, you're going to bow your head and be obedient and submissive. And that's I mean, I think that's what Paul is continually coming back to. I think it's part of our American culture. Yeah. You know, I mean, our whole country was founded on rebellion and founded on this idea of inalienable inalienable rights. I've got rights as an individual that nobody can ever take from me. And as we were talking earlier. Which we agree with. Oh, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. But it's just, but it becomes a culture then of everything is going to be filtered through my own lens and do I like this? And, um, you know, in the, in the history of the early United States, I think it was Pope Leo XIII who wrote about, he was concerned about a heresy that he called Americanism. Yeah, yeah. And it's this idea of you think you're supposed to vote on everything. You yeah, know, yeah. like there's a, almost a democratic spirituality and it's not making you 
It's not the way the church works. It's not the way the church works, and it's not the way God works. I think that's really the the heart of it. You know, it's like there are times that we just have to say because because God's in charge, and we might disagree with it. Well, and and even in that, Paul talks here about a twisted and depraved generation, perverse generation, crooked and perverse generation. Yeah, Um, it's always been that way. Yeah, you know, we look around and we say things are so messed up and. Are they messed, more messed up? I, who's to judge? Just messed but, up differently. Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah, exactly. Just, <laughs> but it's, <laughs> yeah. it's a perverse and twisted generation, and it's always been that way. Yeah, same circus, different perverse and <laughs> twisted great. clowns, that's really. Great. That's how it that's works. That's great. Um, for <laughs> God is the one who, for his good purpose, works in you both to desire and to work. Um, and that follows that fear and trembling statement, and I think that's important. He's trying to say, yes, you're working out your salvation in the reverence and the awe and the seriousness but the reason you're doing it is because God's at work in you. And I love that line. I, I fumbled it when I first read it. But it's God who, for his good purpose, works in you both to desire, right. to want holiness, right. and to work for holiness. That's great. And it needs to be more than just, uh, I wish I was holy. Right. You know, right, like right. we can all like sit around wishing we were holy, but it's actually through God's grace and the power of God in us allowing us to be something we couldn't be on our own because of the twisted and depraved world yeah, yeah, yeah. in which we live, uh, which is holiness, yeah. and that's, that's the goal of it. And he goes on to say, Do everything without grumbling or questioning, that you may be blameless and innocent children of God without blemish in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation. And that grumbling and questioning really, for any Jewish reader, would harken back to the time of Moses. Mm-hmm. And, you know, th- that phrase of grumbling— you know, the 40 years in the desert, you know, the Israelites were just always grumbling, always complaining. And every morning in the invitatory of uh, the Liturgy of the Hours, we reflect, or at least most mornings, on Psalm 95, which is, if today you hear the voice of the Lord, don't let your hearts be hardened as they were in the wilderness. And so, like, every morning we wake up and it's like, Look, God's like, look, I spent so much time with those people, a whole generation. I was feeding them. I was giving them water from a rock. They were still complaining and murmuring and grumbling. And so here Paul is saying, in the light of the Spirit of God working in us, do everything without the grumbling or the questioning, that's that obedience thing, that we may shine like lights in the world as we hold fast to the word of life. Yeah, the, yeah, the... I like that image of shining forth. Uh, what we say it again? Just sure. Uh, among whom you shine like lights light, in the world. Lights and light in the world, right? Yeah. So when we think of what's going on in the world, the the faithful Christian, the faithful Catholic, um, the one who is um, not grumbling, who does it with joy. At the end of this this particular chapter talks about joy. Uh, I mean, that's a light that we so desperately need yeah. right now. Amen. Right? Everybody jumps on. Everybody's so quick to jump on when things are wrong or something's not going right or they didn't like this or that. But to be able to do that without complaining and yeah that's great well and you Paul know, had it together yeah Paul had it together well and I would like to highlight actually one of the reasons why we even do this podcast and something that we've always I think it's just part of our personalities in general but that um, you know there are other uh, there are other voices out there and it is grumbling and complaining sure, sure, it can sure. it's really easy to get negative it's really easy to be cynical it is a crooked to and point perverse out generation. Wrong. Right, yeah, right. We're it not is denying a, that. Yeah, it, yeah, it's absolutely. And, and neither is Paul. He's saying, like, look, yes, it's absolutely messed up. But if you really want to shine, don't complain about it. Yeah. Don't grumble about it. Uh, that doesn't mean don't do things about it. Of it's not, not trying to, you know, spin the other. It's, not, it's also not to call it out because he spends Paul oh, spends a lot of he, time calling it he out. He calls a lot right, of it right. out, but he's doing something about it. Yeah, you know, again, right. it goes back to that actively working and doing it all in this spirit of. Fear and trembling, of awe, of reverence, of seriousness, and relying that it's God's work. You know, Jesus said, you are lights to the world. We see this echoed in what Paul is saying, uh, that you would be lights in the world as you hold on to the word of life. And I think that's, I think that's the heart of it. Like, you know, what's the anchor in a perverse, uh, you know, generation? What's the, what's the anchor in a crazy storm of this world? We hold on to God's word. You know, and, and as Catholics, God's word doesn't just exclusively mean scripture, it's tradition and scripture. It's the teaching, it's the revelation of God given to us through the church, it's the sacraments. And when we hold on to that, I mean, gosh, no matter how bad life is, yeah. we get to receive the Eucharist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, that's, I mean, that, that's, so, so cause, that's a plus. That's a plus. That's a plus. That's, that's cause for rejoicing, and that gets us to the end of this section. 
Um, he almost he concludes this little part of the letter of saying, "Finally, my brothers, rejoice in the Lord." And uh, he's already said that a few times. He's going to say that a few more times. But even in light of all these things that are going on, uh, it's God that gives us joy. The world will never give us joy, um, but God is the one that gives us joy. And in the midst of all of it, we should rejoice. give Him praise Amen. and rejoice. Amen. Should I pray? Sure. All right, thanks. That'd be right. Thanks. I, I like it when you pray. Thanks. I, I'm getting ready. Okay. All right. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Heavenly Father, we thank you that you have called us by name, and we thank you that when we cooperate with you, when we surrender to you, uh, you help us uh, attain salvation. By the grace and the merits and the, by the power of the Holy Spirit and the sacraments, we can be faithful to you. We pray, Jesus, for the listener today who is struggling most, who is struggling with being obedient to you, who is struggling with a particular teaching, who is struggling with loving and being charitable to someone, pour forth your Holy Spirit upon them. Let them know your love and your peace so that they can be a light in the midst of a depraved generation. May the Lord pour his blessings on you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Father. You're welcome, Bob. God bless you. Thank you all for making it through 97 episodes. And we hope... We'll Coming into 100. We, we hope... We we'll might make it. <laughs> hope at franciscan.edu. Shoot us an email. God bless. Go Bucks. Go Broncos. Go Broncos.